Good morning, folks. We've got tons of articles to hit today, and the sun keeps blasting away, and I keep thinking about how many people freaked out for me saying we weren't in grand solar minimum yet. Haven't heard from those folks in a while now. Wonder why. Anyway, here's the last 24 hours on our star. The big sunspots are gone, but the new ones on the incoming limb picked up the slack. There was an X-class event on the limb there as it came in. We'll have increased flare watch once more as it turns in to face the Earth over the coming days. The blast sent out a solid CME, but due to its position pointed about 90 degrees away from the Earth, it will miss us. But chances for Earth impact increase every minute as it turns more and more to face the Earth. That CME that we had said was on its way turned out to be a little late. This was the very last wide burst from the departing spots and it has triggered a level 2 solar storm this morning. Wouldn't expect this one to last very long or intensify to any greater extent than this. Our focus is indeed on the sunspots for more flaring. We are watching all of them, but of course the big ones incoming are the most interesting. We can now see it's at least six umbral cores in relatively close proximity, but definitely not as close as the big one that just left our view eyes open. First up in the articles today, a hellish Earth-sized planet around a red dwarf 55 light years away. They say its year is only about seven days and likely had its atmosphere totally stripped by major flares from its host star. We also have the same observatory reporting on a very different planet, a giant one but with the density of cotton candy. At least before your kid smashes and crushes it down, it is a giant fluffy planet. Folks, we have a serious analysis here of moon forcing, sunspots, and earthquakes. Great to see this one adding to the solar forcing of seismicity volume, and to include the moon as well is quite the cherry on top. That one is open access to read at the link below. Had a good laugh reading this next one. You know, they will do anything to try to explain the various Earth's atmosphere anomalies except ask about Earth's magnetic field. Here, they're trying to explain it, discussing a hypothetical and almost certainly not real dark matter candidate is causing them, despite the fact that dark matter isn't supposed to interact with normal matter. That's fun. And last but not least, folks, this is about the last thing I want to read in planetary exploration news. We are counting on Bepi Colombo's upcoming data from Mercury's orbit to determine if the innermost planet is having magnetic changes like the other spheres of our system. Fingers crossed. Really hope they get this straightened out and the mission marches on. We're watching it all. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.